little piece that you might enjoy. It's where we look at our archive footage. Could be a horse race, could be a train or a driver. We just don't know. But we do know it is called In Case You Missed It. Now, in case you missed it, several years back at Fraser Downs, we visited with the Hall of Fame drivers Hervé Fillion and Keith Waples. Not only two of the greatest names in the sport, but perhaps the two best drivers to ever jump in a bike. While we were there, we had fun, they had fun. The other drivers just had a ball. We just had to revisit with them in case you missed it. Hervé Fillion is the most winningest driver in standard bread history. He's expected to reach 15,000 victories this season, making him a living legend. But today is special because he's facing off with his mentor and idol, a legend in his own right, Mr. Keith Waples. Uh, please, I was 1952, I was 12 years old. I remember those guys when I was 12, 13 years old. Back in 1952-53. It's a four-race matchup between Hervé Fillion and Keith Waples and uh, they're going to accrue points uh, over the course of the designated races. The fellow at the end with the most points is, of course, going to be the match, ma match of the Masters champion. They are characters from another generation. I tell you, I, I would love to have been around in the day when they were in their prime because uh, uh, if, if they're any indication of what harness racing was, it must have been a lot of fun. Talk to me. How's it going? Good. Okay, we're good. Thank you for the drive. I was a youngster back in Quebec, in Richelieu Park, in Montreal. I used to watch him. He was the only driver I used to watch all the time because I always admired that man, the way he sat behind the bike and how comfortable he was all the time and the move he made. So that man, everything I, I did, I wanted to do better than him, but I could never do it better than him because everything I got, I believe I learned a lot from him. I learned more from Keith than I did from my father, I think just watching them all the time on the racetrack. Chuck Pullen says he's gonna have a day here and get Herb out here, so I thought I better come and watch how he, how he operated. And now I see he can talk to you as much as ever. <laughs> <laughs> when you're close to 15,000 winners and more than 5,000 winners ahead of your closest, closest rival, I think you're the kind of person that is utterly consumed by your sport. Oh, I love it. Are you kidding me? I love it. Nothing that's the best place I feel the most comfortable. You know, you don't get tired, you know. The challenge, it's always a challenge. I'll and take. so, the challenge begins. Two masters of their trade head to head over four races. A Fraser Down showpiece of significant proportion. If any of the masters finish first, they get four points. A second place finish nets you three. Third place gets two. Anything less gets you one single point. In the first race of the match of the Masters, Phil Yon led the way in third place with Waples lagging behind, albeit one spot back in fourth. Phil B. Precious Jewel W. Race two was much of the same. The mentor giving way to the master as Fillion took command with a second place finish. I can't seem to keep up. <laughs> I think maybe we're getting too old. No. All you need is a young, fast horse. You follow. They don't know how you are behind them. All you're gonna do is follow them. And follow he did. Fillion ahead of Waples for most of the day. You left out of there, got in the two hole, you had no excuse. The only excuse you can come up with is you didn't have enough power. <laughs> you, you, can't, power. you can't do without it. <laughs> I was lucky. Me, I reached that one horse that should kick right off and double lane. I knew it was a winner coming off the turn. <laughs> Even the last horse I raced, he was not bad. But he was just daring me to hit him down the lane. I was coaxing him. He just dared me to hit him down the lane. I didn't want to. I just got beat by that yeah, much. He kept on coming. By the third race, Fillion was clearly in control, but as Fillion said himself, it's a horse race and anything can happen. Could Waples pull an upset in the final race and turn the tables? Well, no, it was mathematically impossible, but Waples did finish ahead of Fillion for the first time in the day, but in seventh position, so they both pick up one point. It was Fillion's day he had met his mentor and came out victorious, but like a true champion, he remained humble. Lucky luck of the draw. Yeah. I had the luck of the draw, so that's the only reason I won, I guess. Oh, yeah, he, he's always been a top driver. He always will be, likely. Hey, folks, mount up. It's time to saddle up and ride over to the trainer's corner.